Fashion Sewers, I hope you are well. If you're new to my channel, I'm Colleen Jean Lee. And in this tutorial, we are going to be refashioning this garment. Um, it's either a dress or a top, depending on the body shape. Um, I've tried it on, um, a dress for me, and I seriously think I'm going to struggle with this one. I think what drew me to it was the embroidery detail at the edge here of the flounce. Um, it's on the sleeves as well, but it's not on the back of the main section, but it is on the sleeves. Ooh. And what I try to do with my projects is I will try and make sure that I use as much as possible so there's a little amount of waste and also make sure that I'm not adding to it unless I have to or unless if I'm pairing two together I mean that's just more amazing isn't it because there's less to um go into landfill if you make you know combine two garments yeah so how am I going to do this there's no fastenings on this, there's no zips, there's no buttons, no hooking eyes, no press studs, um, just elastic. I'm going to make sure I'm using elastic in there because remember I'm trying not to create too much waste. I can't think of anything right now while it's in this shape. Other than the fact it's, it's here. And then it's just straight down. So, the thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take it apart and then start thinking about my idea from that point. I think that's the best thing for me to do. So, what I'm going to do is keep the elastic in. So, I'm going to work with the elastic as part of this design and see what I come up with. So in order for me to make sure that I've got elastic in the sleeves and I'm also keeping elastic in the sleeves and just see what I come up with, that's that's the whole point of my project unless I desperately need to make something that I've got in my head. But I just can't think of anything right now. Um, so I'm going to make sure I keep the elastic in the sleeves as well as the front and also the back. So I'm going to have to make small stitching on here and here to make sure the elastic doesn't escape all the way around and then cut and then just have the back front the flaps that's going around it the sleeves and then let's see if I come up with an idea that way um, yeah and maybe just maybe I may not bring in another garment in order to make this work let's see how it goes I have stitched each side all the way around on each section so to make sure that I don't lose the elastic and then I'm now going to cut to the wrong side Okay, I'm now cut into the dress and I've now got sections. So let me just go through this. So we've got the front, the elastication still in there. And I've left the raw, no, not raw, the overlocked seam on that section. I kept the sleeves intact for now. There's the other one. And here's the other one still got the elastication at the top and this is the back section 
and then I've got a front and back which are pretty large pieces so it's got dots in it as well one seems to be higher than the other anyway um, so I've got two rectangular large scraps there I'll put that to the side for one moment oh yeah I've I literally cut into I wanted to save this onto that and I just I wasn't focused I wasn't paying attention so yeah that, it'll have to come off um so I'm, I'm really stuck at the moment what I did like when I was cutting away the main part of the dress was this I left some seam allowance on the last in case I had to attach this onto anything but it's it, it looks gorgeous as a frill in itself so I love that that is so pretty so this is the wrong side and you can tell by the embroidery that it is the wrong side and you compare it to the front but it's not that dissimilar from the front so I'm going to use it on this side I'm going to use the wrong side of this because of this I really like that and it's also the same on the one without the embroidery on it as well I think it's just so pretty I think it just just adds and it's a bit of chic to it so it's definitely staying on the wrong side and that's fine um, it's knowing what to do with the sleeves I can't have this because I was thinking about having them as a cuff but if I sew that I mean I can literally get a thing through there can't I? Um, no it's just going to be too small um, so this project is going to need a bit more thinking I'm going to need more creative thinking I think for this and plus I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too happy with it no, it's it's not speaking to me really so someone tells me I think I'm going to open up the sleeves don't know so at this stage it is going to be a case of I'm going to get two outfits out of this I'll bring the camera up so that I can speak to you face to face so it looks like I'm going to be it's going to be used in two projects and what I mean by that, I'm going to be adding a black dress and also a black tee, a black t-shirt. I'm going to add them to it. So um, I'm going to try and see if I can do this, these two items within this video. It looks like we're going to have to continue tomorrow. Yeah, more than likely I will. Um, so I've got a black t-shirt here. This is a fitted one. I've also got, I've got a couple of black t-shirts, so I'm not sure if it's going to get it's going to be this fitted one. I've got this black. I mean, I haven't really worn that. I think I've only worn that once. Worn this a good few times, but um, it's a dress with long sleeves. So yeah, that may be second option I want to focus on perhaps doing the tee first the t-shirt first and I've got this one here as well it's a v-neck it's a bit more of a slinking slinking knit so I've got to play around with the idea of placing these on here which I have done a little bit but not on uh, I haven't put the t-shirts on so it's going to be on here this isn't quite a curve it's, it, it's definitely rectangular-ish oh, but there is a slight curve in there actually but what I'm going to do is I'm going to place that on here somehow that way around on the wrong side and have it some way which I'll show you in, in a minute um, when I can get a full length view of myself so yeah that's what I'm going to do so I know I'm definitely going to be using this on the front of a tee with the red embroidery 
this I'm going to be using that on the dress I've kind of made my mind up already that the dress is definitely having this and also I'm going to use it I'm going to use this on the dress as well I'm not quite sure yet so I'm going to give myself some creative thinking time how I'm going to be using that but that's def this is definitely going somewhere on the bodice area of that dress and then maybe I'll wear it a little bit more often but it is a fitted dress though so that is kind of decided for me already just not sure what to do with the big pieces it looks like possibly the sleeves there will be sleeves so it's deciding whether I go for this one or the fitted one and then what do I do about the sleeves so in this case it will be a case of starting with the part that I like the best at the moment it is is this frill here with this little added frill that I did which I think is so cute and it's going to go onto the bodice I'm going to try and keep it into a curved shape and it's going to be covering one breast and it's going to come all the way around like so so it'll be asymmetrical something like that so I'm going to put that on and then decide what I'm going to do with the sleeves I don't want to add the sleeves to the dress I want the dress to stay black and white and so this has got to be added somewhere onto onto the T somehow um, I'm just got to decide whether it's going to be I might even try and see if I can find another black t-shirt as well <laughs> this, this is what happens this is the reason why I'm doing these videos is because I just don't want to give you um, the illusion that I instantly, instantly see something it's like yes okay yeah I know what I'm gonna do with that because sometimes it doesn't happen that way and this is one of those occasions and I definitely want to film this and put this out there on my channel so you can see that I'm struggling but I know I'll get there that's the thing is not to give up know that you get there and just keep going and just do it in stages so the next stage is going to be trying on either one of these tees and see which one would work best with this design and these sleeves are going to be on here somehow I'm just not sure how they may look like sleeves they may not I know I can't have them as cuffs but I didn't really want them as cuffs anyway so that's fine at least I don't think so but if they are they're going to be I don't think I've got a long do I have one? It's going to be hmm no I think it's important that when you are refashioning just not to do it for the sake of doing it and that's the case with me that all my refashion mates I know I will wear them um, so I'm not just doing it because I have the ability to do it I definitely need to be able to be wearing these and that is going to be definitely the case so I just need to rethink how I'm going to do that so the first thing is going to be attaching this like I said on the bodice it's going to be asymmetrical it's going to be on one half it's going to cover my breast no, that way around so I've got the embroidery somehow like that asymmetrical so let me try it on each one of these tees and um, it's, so, it's such a common word now isn't it it's called t-shirt tees now and I'm really getting, in, getting into that <laughs> um, so I'm going to try these two tees on now and see which one this suits best and then focus on the sleeves after I'm happy with the placement of this frill on the bodice. So let's get to the first fitting. That's this way round, both on the wrong side. Um. Okay, yeah, I like that. That's nice. Oh, like a fan. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Okay. So I bring this up here. Okay. 
Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's good placement. I like that placement. Get a pin. And make sure I do not stick myself up, prick myself. <laughs> that's good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I like that. And it goes under the arm, which is good. Not back to the armpit. No, that's good. That's nice. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to keep this care that's happening here naturally. I don't want to force it. I just want it to do its own thing. I think it starts, starts there. So you've got to, the, the thing is with, when you read fashioning, it's all about trying to figure out sometimes which way the grain is within the garment. And if you see it lying quite nicely like this, you more or less, I was going to say, you more or less on grain, you more, you more or less on point that you've got the grain line um, in place so it's hanging nicely. And then that goes to the back under my arm, just there. I don't think I can get a pin in there. <laughs> can I? Uh, I think I may be able to. <sighs> yes. No, I didn't. I'll try one more time. It's a thing when you're fitting things on yourself and you don't have an assistant. I need an assistant, that's what I do. I really do need an assistant. I have a lot of an assistant. Oh yeah. That's nice. Yeah, that might be in the right place. I must be so careful when I take this up now. I think it may need to come. Up. Oh yeah, got it out of there. Yeah. That's nice. <gasps> That is so cute. Yeah, it's curving, that's nice. Happy. So this is going to be hand sew. <laughs> yes, hand sewing. That's cute. And I'm going to need some scissors you know, to cut that because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut, because if I need to, it to be back in this shape, it just means I, I just have to sew the seam down again, which will be slightly smaller, but it doesn't matter. What? I like this. Okay. That's looking good. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's looking good. Okay, we just cut.
So that will go. There. Yes. Okay. slightly higher and one is lower. Yeah, that's fine. That's cute. Okay, this one. Give the sleeve. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's definitely going to be a neck thing that's going on here. Right, so I'm going to cut this. And we're going to have this somehow. We have to make this smaller. places I won't because this may hang loose that will be attached and the inside will be attached so this will be hanging loose and yeah it's gonna be cute if you haven't already subscribed please think about doing so I'm here to inspire motivate and share ideas for refashioning clothing whether they're old or new i want to put out there how we can rethink how we use clothing that is already out there and refashioning it and if you're into that sort of thing it's worthwhile subscribing to my channel let's get back to the tutorial okay this is the dress i was talking about And I want to cover up my wobbly bits, <laughs> as they say. Um, so it's going to be using the wrong side. And this is an apron. Could have it like this, that's fine. You know me, I'm going to let it drop. Ooh, okay. It's going to bottom through with the top. Um, no. Sleeves. I'm going to make cuff sleeves 
So I do, some of you may know, draft my own patterns, but I do have a gathered sleeve, a sleeve fit, a gather like that, and that will hopefully create the balance. It's quite long, so I'm gonna perhaps use all of this and rouge this up a little bit so that a little bit of this is showing that looks nice. I know you can't see what's in my head, but um I think it's not weird, it's not really nice. And this yeah, I'm happy with that, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to work on the t-shirt first, do some hand sewing, and then I'm going to cut the sleeves off from this and then attach this by hand as well because I'm just doing them in certain areas, not attaching the whole thing. Um, and let's see what happens. I'm working on the top part of the T, the bust area. I'm doing overcasting stitching here. I'm doing it in the black square so you won't be able to see it. I'm going to do doing a small amount as well. So I started from there, there, and I'm going to do that one, that one, and that's all I need to do as long as it's small enough that it will stay in place. I'm back. So, where was I? I? Need to think. Where was I? <laughs> I know where I was. So, I managed to get two garments out of this blouse, which is this top and the dress. Yeah. Quick peek there. So, let's focus on the top first. So the, the top was pretty much straightforward. Um, I, only hand stitching was involved in this in to, to keep it in place. Um, and as you know, I try to use as much of a garment as possible. And I wanted to make a choker with this. So in order for me to do that now then, is to cut away the rest of the fabric. Okay, so I'll have to take my time in order to cut around all of this embroidery and making sure that I don't cut into it. I'm done and it looks pretty. Yeah, it's nice. That's what is left over. Can't see myself, I can't see myself putting this on on any part of the garment, either of them. Yeah. So this is how much waste that was left over. So it's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. So that's fine. Yes, let's try this on now and see what it looks like now that I've taken away all that bulk. It looks cute. Yeah, I like this. I think 
I think I prefer this than my original idea of wanting to keep the section where the elastic was. I think this looks so cute. What I've just done is just tied it at the back. Can you? I'm hoping, let me show you again just in case you miss that. Um, I'm hoping that it will just stay. I just, just did a twist for a tie and that's, that's it. Um, it is folding on itself, but that looks so cute as well. Um, cause I've only got, I've only got a short neck. Um, but no, that's, I'm liking that. I've even put it a little bit off center there as well. So you've got this section here. So I don't have to cut any of that away, which is excellent. Um, so I'm keeping all of that. And yeah, it's, it's a good balance between what's happening here and what's happening at my neck. So I'll show you the rest of the top. That is so gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. It looks so much better like this than the top that it was. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Yeah, I can see myself living in this. It's not going anywhere. It's all hand sewn. It's all gorgeous. And yeah, this was the sleeve and this was the front section. And yeah, that's good. So now I'm going to try on the dress as well because that is just so gorgeous as well. Okay, now time for the dress and this gorgeous sleeve. Yeah, the dress is just as amazing as the top. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, it's it's cute. It's yeah, it's really cute. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did this sleeve, and the sleeve is done in a way that is. It's, it's, it's a covering, a sleeve covering is what I'm going to call it because it's not attached to the dress at all. I've only just faced it into position. Let me just show you. Like magic. Two sleeves. <laughs> yes, two sleeves. Um, the, the, it, it just works. I didn't want to put the sleeve this sleeve into the armhole for this sleeve because it does for perhaps two reasons there'd be too much bulk and the other reason it doesn't necessarily have to be I'm trying to find ways of how we can construct garments that isn't traditionally done that way and this would prove to be no problem so all I would need to do really is just sew the top here I didn't have enough fabric to put by spanning all the way around so I just put it at the head of the sleeve and that is going to be machine sewn into place. Might, it might be, I don't know, might, might, might sew it in by machine or by hand, it's only a small section um, but yeah it's, it's cute. Um, I've also done a tie for the, for the end of the sleeve as well. Now the tie was the hemline of the actual top, it was the hemline of that, so that's really cute, uh, I love that, I think it's a good detail, that's where the other sleeve comes through, and yeah it's a, it's a, good, it's a good sleeve, it's nice. So I put that one into place, I tried it on and I'm really happy with the way that has turned out. So here is the other sleeve and all I need to do is to gather the top. So I put my gathering stitches in so all I need to do is just pull those to get this beautiful gathering effect. The sleeve, let me turn it inside out and I'll bring the camera down because I think that would be better than me just hanging, <laughs> holding it up in thin air. 
Okay. So I did a French seam, nice neat French seam. I added an elastic, quite um, broad elastic, and like I said earlier, the ties, which were the hemline to the top. And I turned it back twice, so I did a double fold and that kept the raw edge nice and neat inside which is gorgeous like i said i didn't have enough of the top left over to do any bias binding to it so all i need then to do is just to gather where's the other one And you do is gather that around and it will look very much like the these gathers here so that's what I'm going to do next and then I will put the bias binding on that section and this sleeve will be complete ready to be attached let me show you a couple of cute features that are on here I've got a thread loop here and that is what these straps thread through in order to get the ties and to keep and also to keep them in place as well more than anything else a bit tricky we do this angle here but it just goes through like this oops come back out again doesn't want to go through it's very I've, I've did, you can do them a lot bigger if you wanted to as well but I just wanted to keep it yeah there we go it threads through and the other one threads through the other direction so it ends up like this one that stays in place doesn't move that's cute and the other cute feature which is Oh, it's not on this sleeve. It must be on this sleeve. Is it on this sleeve? Yes, there we go. It's just gingham. It's <laughs> making my eyes go funny. Little darts there. Only on one sleeve though. It's not on this one. It's only on that one. And that is the dart, the bust dart of the actual original top. How cute is that feature? And it's only one sleeve. How original. The next thing is now that I'm happy with how the gathering is going on the top of the sleeve to give it that gorgeous puffiness, it's then to get this is the bias binding that I'm using, create my own. If you want to do this, you can you can shop bought bias binding and do it that way. So what I will then do is I will place my vice binding like so pop some pins in I'd actually put my pins in that way but I just want to show you how it will look without me just putting the pins that way enables me to you'll see in a moment see so if I put them that way I won't be able to show you that technique of folding it so once it is stitched by sewing machine so I'll definitely sew this by a machine and then I'll fold this back in order to cover the raw edge and fold that section back and then I would hand stitch that into place on the wrong side and then it's ready then to go onto the top it's basically go onto the sleeve and then i sew the top in position i think I, I'll, I'll definitely use the hand stitching for that because it's only a small section and the rest of the sleeve is going to be free so i'm going to do that now and then i'm going to try it on so that we can have a look I'm now at the hand stitching stage 
So I have sewn the top of the sleeve, the gathers, into the bias and I'm just hand sewing that close. Shouldn't take me too long because it's only a small section. If you're going to do this and it's your first time, it's probably best to baste. But while I've been sitting here, and you know I'm trying to use as much of a garment when I'm refashioning, and it was a little bit sad that I didn't, well, perhaps not sad, but um, I wasn't able to use the other sleeve once I cut away the embroidery. Oh, look what's happened. <sighs> That's the other sleeve. <laughs> so I have been sitting here. I just tapped it there. I've made a little like flower. Florid type thing. So I'm going to secure that in place in certain areas. And I'm going to put that onto the dress. Because I just think it's so cute. It's just looking at me saying, please make something out of me. Let me join the other sleeve. So yeah, it's going to be used. So I'm going to, I may not get time to do that before I'm ready to show you the rest of the dress once I put the sleeves on, but that will definitely be on the dress. You may have to um, follow me on Instagram in order to, to, to actually see that. But if I can, I'll probably be able to just tack it in place, I think. But um, I'm not sure because it's more important that I actually finish off the sleeve so I can show you that. Sleeves are on. Oh, this is so gorgeous. This apron detail. I'm calling it. And yeah, oh, let's give this a go. Let's try this on. Let's see what it looks like. I won't have time to do the um, flower, but um, it's staying there for a the moment. I don't want to touch it until I'm ready to um, put pins in it and stuff. And But let's get this out of the way. Let's try this on. Of this dress is just, yeah. Mm. Yes, it's gorgeous. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Tips and advice. Tips and advice. Let's start with the choker. And um, the choker. If you can manage to do it the way I was intending to do it first and you're happy with that, go ahead and do that. But if you end up doing something like this, just think about what type of fasteners you're going to use on it. You can use buttons, Velcro, um, snaps. Um, I've just tied mine. For now, I've had it on for most of the video and I've only had to adjust it once to tighten it a little bit. So I'm going to have to rethink that a little bit so it actually stays. But um, you can also, if you don't like this folding over that's happening, you can always put um, interfacing in there 
you know, there are different weights, the, the um, heavier the weight, the more rigid it will be and you won't have this golden effect and it also depends on the length of your neck as well. Um, just experiment, just experiment. Like I said, um, with the flower that I'm going to be putting on today, on here, it was just sitting there and it's basically saying, you need to use me as well. And yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, put that on here somewhere so that it's used. And there's going to be a little bit of fraying that's happening with my choice of fabrics that I'm using particularly with the, the sleeves and when I used it on the wrong side I've just put it away and left the raw edge so eventually as I wash the garment it will there will be some fraying not a lot because particularly on the on, on this section because it's being cut on the bias and with the bias there isn't that much as if it was on the straight or the cross grain um and the case it's just a case of just experiment you don't have to do everything that I have done within this tutorial as such just make it your own that's going to be key and and I, I think you will enjoy the whole process of hand sewing I'm going to put it in there because it is vital and if you want great looking garments hand sewing is key can you make this and also the top with just a sewing machine absolutely it will look a little bit flatter if you do that but you can do that. I'm not saying that you should. Um, for me personally, it is very much a case of it's a skill that I've learned from a very young age and I would push it as much as I possibly can. Um, and I've mentioned in the past, I don't particularly always enjoy hand sewing because it can be time consuming, especially when you're, you're desperate to see whether this is going to work. But I'm telling you, Every single time, my mother was right. Every single time, it's you do you do see the difference. You really do see the difference. So, if you have an opportunity to make a garment like I've done here, um, two garments out of one top, one could be machine sewn, one could have a lot more hand sewing involved. As you know, there's a little bit of machine sewing that was in, involved in this dress. Oh. Yes, I'm so excited. Um, it's worked. And I love this sleeve, slip on sleeve thing that's happening here as well. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's just my designs um, ideas are just coming to uh, coming into reality, and it's and it's nice because I, I do love designing. I really do love designing, and um, yeah, I think it's one of my greatest skills rather than sewing. If, if I'm honest, that and pattern cutting. If I had to put it in order, it would be it would yeah, it would be that order: designing, pattern cutting, and sewing. Um, so at, at three, sewing is not my strength. <laughs> sewing is a skill I learned from my mother. Um, yeah, and I've kind of mastered it over the years. But, oh, oh, yes. Anyway, if you enjoy this pro, if you have enjoyed this project, please give it a thumbs up and please do share and tell all your friends all about it. Share it on all your social media platforms. Do remember that I'm here to inspire you and to motivate you that you can have these amazing garments from old or even new clothing, yeah? Just go ahead and just try, um, well, just try and, try and make a concerted effort to refashion what's either in your wardrobe, whether you have sewn them or you bought them from the high street or you know whatever the situation is, just refashion them. Let's give this this revolution a opportunity of saying that we can we can refashion clothing that's already out there. We don't necessarily have to start from scratch. I'm not against that because I know I will be still continuing to make garments from scratch, but. I am just finding this journey just amazing that I can have new clothing from old. This dress is old. The t-shirt is not as old. It's quite new, but this is this is definitely years old. Yeah, and haven't worn it for many years as well. Um, but it's nice to know that it's going to be worn again shortly. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, like I said, do do um, follow me on social media, especially on Instagram, because that's where I'll be doing a lot of my refashioning. I also may, if you want, put that down in the comments, um, put this on my uh, community tab page. So, um, you know, you can always go there and look as well. So um, I'll continue admiring myself in this dress of mine. 
And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.